People tell me all the time, you know what? I would love to use Keynote more, but you know what the problem is? I don't make my content alone and I need to work with other people whenever I do it and I can't do that in Keynote. Well, you know what? If you watch this series at all, you know, of course you can do it, but it's hard and it's hidden. And there's a couple tricks you need to know to be able to figure it out. So that's what we're gonna do today is show you all those little tips and tricks so that you can actually build content with other people inside a Keynote. Let's get into it. What's going on everybody and welcome back to The Crazy One. As always, I'm your host Stephen Gates and this is the YouTube channel and podcast that helps you be more creative, be a better leader and figure out apps like Keynote. So you know what? Hey, do me a favor. If you like this content, hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell so you get the latest content whenever that comes out. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about collaboration because that obviously is something a lot of us are having to do lately and you can do it inside of Keynote. But again, there's a couple little tips and tricks that we need to do. So let's jump into the program and get started. So here we are back once again in Keynote. All that I've done is just open Keynote and open up a blank presentation. So that's all this is. Now, if you remember from whenever we've done this in other videos, you will remember that one of the things where all the secret stuff, all the goodies, all the features you didn't know existed, exist up here in this toolbar. And what you wanna be able to do is to right click on it and to go down right there where it says Customize Toolbar. So whenever we hit that, this whole little magic drawer slides out. And what we wanna pay attention to is a few different things. The first one we're gonna see is there's one here called Keynote Live. There is another one here called Collaborate. What the hell is the difference between the two of them? So what Keynote Live is, is that that is something that will let you broadcast your presentation. If you wanna be able to send it out to have other people watch it, that's what Keynote Live is. The thing is though, I never use this because it has one huge problem, which is that it only broadcasts the imagery. It doesn't broadcast the audio. And for me, there is nothing that says, I know what it is I'm doing by sending you one link to a video and another link to a conference call. That is not a look that I want. So this Keynote Live is not anything that I ever use. What you wanna be able to use is collaborate. And what that is, is just what it sounds like. This will let you collaborate with other people. And so what you wanna do is to put that in here. And now while we're in here, I'll have you drag out one other piece. And you can see I've got the two of them sitting right there. It's a little collaboration section that I have built is I want you to pull out comment. So put both of those up there in the bar. If you want to, and we create the spacing, there's a little flexible space there. So you can arrange it however you want. But these are the tools that we're gonna to use today. Collaborate and that comment. Okay, so what we're gonna do is the first thing that you do whenever you go in here is we'll say this is the deck that we wanna share with people. It's in a great shape we wanna do. So what you wanna be able to do is to go up and collaborate. Now, one of the things you can do is you can tell if you are not collaborating with anybody because this icon is gray. If you are working with other people, that little person in the plus will be green, which means you are connected with other people. So let's go ahead and hit it. Okay, now we are into the first problem, which is that what you need to do is you actually need to be able to move your presentation into iCloud. Now what you can do is you can hit the button to do it automatically, but what you want for right now, well, I don't wanna do that. What I wanna do is actually show you what to do. So if I come out to my desktop here, what you'll find is that there is this, iCloud Drive. Now usually this automatically will default show up in the side over here. Again, if not, go up into search and you can find it. But this is what we wanna be able to do is that whenever you go into iCloud Drive, you'll see there is a Keynote folder right there. And when you get into that right now, it's empty. And it'll say you can move any existing documents into iCloud by dragging them here from other apps, blah, blah, whatever, right? This is where the deck needs to go. So what I'm gonna do is I have it on my desktop and I'm just gonna drag it into this folder because that's where it is that I need to go. So take that, be able to put it in Keynote. Now when we see, ta-da, there is the Keynote file that I'm working with. Now, whenever we go back into Keynote, now we're gonna see whenever we hit collaborate that now this actually pops up, but. Now let's take a second and talk about iCloud accounts because yes, you need to have one and the person you're working with needs to have one. But the important thing here is that whenever you actually hit that collaborate button and you send the invitation, you need to make sure that you're sending it to the, the email that they have that is associated with their account. The mistake a lot of people do is they send it to their work email. Well, as you can imagine, most people's iCloud's accounts, since it's personal, is not associated with their work email. 
So what you need to figure out is what's the Yahoo address, the Gmail address, the whatever it is that's associated with that account, and that's where you need to send the invite because only then will it sync up with their iCloud, their iCloud Drive, create the copy of the file on their computer, and then it works. Because like I said, if you send it to a different one, that sync won't happen, and you're not gonna be able to do that collaboration, and that's one of the simple things that trips up a lot of people. Now that we understand that what you need to be able to do is have the iCloud account, the email address that is associated with that. Now, whenever I go in and I'll hit add people. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. And some of this is gonna be dependent on what apps you have. Like I use Spark for email, I have Evernote, I've got Pocket, you can airdrop it. But most of the time, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you can email it, you can send it in a message, or you can do this, which is just copy the link. But there's a few other things, because once again, there's this little share options. The other thing that you can do is look at who can access it. So again, can anybody or can only the people who you invite? Most of the time when I'm collaborating with somebody, I only want them to be able to see it. But also there are permissions. Can they make changes or here, is it view only? Obviously, if I'm gonna work on something, I wanna be only the people that I can invite and that they can make changes. Then again, you can go in, copy that link. And again, what you wanna be able to do is right here is to put in the email address or the phone number of who it is you want to send it to. So that's the sort of thing is that, again, I can go through and, again, just put in my email address in there so it'll populate my name. And then, again, I can go off and share that. Now, what's going to happen is, actually, that's my the email address I have right now, so we'll use this one instead. You'll see the share button lights up. And then I'm going to click share. Now, what you're going to see is that what it's going to do is it's going to start to activate that share, which will kind of take a little bit of time. But whenever you go in here, you'll be able to see that they can actually now, it'll say that I have different sharing options and that those people are gonna be listed. Now, if I went through and I accepted the invite, this is then going to turn green because what's gonna happen is it's gonna put a duplicate of this deck, of this file on their computer. So then what happens is if you both have it open, if you are both working on it, you can see the work that each one is doing. So if you're gonna go in and you're gonna add slides, that'll start to show up in yours as well. You can do a lot of these sort of things. And so again, that's gonna make it much easier to be able to go through and do this sort of stuff so that again, you can collaborate on it together. Now the other part is gonna be, that's great. Well, but what if you aren't both online at the same time? What if you actually need to be able to just sort of leave them comments? That's why we had you add this little sticky note feature because whenever you click it, ta-da, you can see what pops out is a sticky note. It's got my name on it. It's got a timestamp. And again, I can put multiple comments. So if I want to say comments about this design, we'll go here. Then again, I can have that comment put in there. And again, I can make multiples. I can have multiple different pages to it. I can do all sorts of things. But here's the thing is that these don't show up in the deck. They only are in this work mode. So now if I wanna leave notes for myself because I'm feeling schizophrenic or whatever it is, whenever I come back, now I can see what this is. I can make those changes and the next time the other person logs in, the changes are there. And again, whenever I'm done, just hit delete, note goes away. Super simple way to be able to do that. So it's this sort of combination of the ability to collaborate with other people. And like I said, you can work in real time. So you can work on the deck together at the same time, or you can work asynchronously by using these notes. And that's the little hidden feature with those two buttons that'll make all that happen. Well, it's just that simple. And hopefully that helped that just with a few quick steps, you can share your content, collaborate in real time, leave notes and comments and do all the things that you probably never knew you could do. Hey, as always, if you like this content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell so you get more of this content whenever it comes out. And also remember, The Crazy One is also a podcast. I've got right now 100 episodes on all sorts of topics around creativity, leadership, design, career coaching, and all kinds of other stuff. All you have to do is head over to thecrazyone.com. That's the words, the crazy, and the number one.com, and you can find all that content there. So hey, thanks again for tuning in. Hopefully it was helpful, and as always... Stay crazy.